Hi, this is Barry, Technical Solutions Architect from Cisco. Today we're going to discuss Cisco Secure Workload, which used to be called Titration. As you know, with the adoption of cloud, applications could live anywhere now. Public, private cloud, or even hybrid. It could be physical, virtual, or containerized, and they have different security controls that talks different languages and probably managed by different teams as well. It's getting harder and harder to get end-to-end -end visibility and policy control, which requires pretty much all systems and teams to work flawlessly together. And we all know how hard that is, right? Anything could go wrong. And on the other hand, the attackers only need to get things right once uh, to get foot in the door and then try lateral movement into critical systems. So Secure Workload solves uh, this problem by offering one single interface to secure all of your applications across the board, minimize the attack surface with micro-segmentation. When you log in to do a Secure Workload, we land on Secure Dashboard. It gives us an overview of how our workloads have been behaving recently. This is an overall view. And you can also drill into specific uh, applications or what we call scope here, uh, like say, for example, SharePoint. Um, and we can go back in time as well. So for example, there's a specific day, you can simply click on it to go back in time and find out exactly what happened to make it stand out. And for each day, you can see that uh, the overall score is broken into six different categories. Uh, for example, we noticed that our attack surface score is the lowest and we want to understand why, right? So we can click on it and it takes us right into the section uh, to find out the details. Now, it's super easy to find out the corporate because uh, this workload is listed on top, right? So we, we can click on it and we'll see why the score is so low for it. Uh, it turns out that it has way too many open but unused ports, which Secure Workload is very good at identifying all of that and be able to advise us uh, maybe we should fortify the server a little bit more. Right? And then if we have any question with score, then we can click on here that explains uh, what is this score and how is it calculated and also what can we do to improve. So same thing for all the other different categories. Let's say, for example, vulnerabilities is the second lowest. And we can drill into details there as well. But instead of uh, uh, this view, we also have a specific view just for vulnerabilities. And over here, we can see all the vulnerabilities in the environment. But you can also choose to look at a particular scope. Uh, let's say SharePoint again. So as you can see, Below are all the vulnerabilities that's relevant to this application. And besides just the CVS's scores, what's most interesting is that we also have a access complexity rating. And what this means is it basically shows how easy it is to exploit this vulnerability. Like low actually means it doesn't take much effort for the bad guys to take advantage of it. Right? So we can download the, this data and send it to our systems team and get them to patch things up. Uh, but if needed, and another benefit of understanding the vulnerability this way, is just so that we can do vulnerability based segmentation, meaning we can define policies like if vulnerability is identified as critical and high impact, right? And uh, the concerned entity uh, should not have access to uh, ABC, right? Until vulnerability is patched. This is also called virtual patching. And this leads us to segmentation, which is under defend here. Um, we can see that all the applications that Secure Workload had mapped out for us, we can easily enforce and manage multiple applications. If we need to add applications that need to access some shared resources like domain controller or other services, right? So Secure Workload uh, can identify the policy changes that need to occur and ask admin for approval here in the policy request. So all we need to do is to go in there and approve it. Let's look at a domain controller since we mentioned it. These are the domain controller policies that are automatically generated and we can modify the view uh, to make it easier to, to see. And we can also at any time focus on certain components so we can see all the communications to and from it. 
So these are all the communications that need to happen. And Secure Workload has the ability to also group servers together. You can see, let's say for example, app dev servers. And you can see on the right, we actually have listed all the servers. So we got two servers. These are identified by Secure Workload automatically based on their running processes or based on the flows like transactions, conversations. So if they're all similar, that means they are running pretty much the same application. And Secure Workload can also group by labels, meaning like right here, row contains app-dev. That's a label. Um, every time you label a server with app-dev, it's going to be automatically grouped into this app-dev servers group. So this is super useful as when applications grows in the future, if you need to add new servers into this workload, we, we don't have to go through change controls or manual settings changes uh, because the new servers can just inherit the policy from this group. So that saves a lot of uh, operational effort. Okay, so let's go back by clicking switch applications and we'll go back to, to see all the different applications. And now this time let's drill into SharePoint again. We can look at more details and at any time we can modify this view to make it easier to see all the applications, right? And we can modify it and move things around. And we can, like last time, we can click on something to focus on all the com communications that's related to one component. So let's say a database. So these workload profiles. So if you look at it, we got this server here that's running the database. And we can look into details of this server and Secure Workload keep track of a lot of details about each server and each uh, enforcement agent. Uh, it reports things like all the different processes. If you look at this, right, so all of the different processes and how long they've been running and uh, resource utilization and any anomalies and uh, verdicts and the hash also it shows us all the libraries it's been using and also gives us a very useful process a snapshot that shows all the relationships of different processes, uh, how they were run and which other processes uh, has called this process, right? And it gives us all the history behind it and also give us all the details about vulnerabilities that's associated to each process, all of those details. So all of these policies are generated automatically for us and we can look at these policies. And let's say, for example, if that, hey, maybe I need to add another policy here and we can just simply create policy like by doing this drag and drop thing and we can enable uh, the developer workstation to access the database if needed, right? And really the next step is, is to uh, click on uh, enforcement, right? To enforce the policies that's automatically generated. But before that, we might wonder a little bit, would that potentially break anything, right? Because I don't want to get called like, you know, Sunday morning that says everything's down or, you know, the backup is broken. How do we know that we're not breaking anything? And so this is where policy analysis come in handy. Right? So if we click on that, this actually lists and analyze the policies against real life traffic. And we can select a period of time, any period of time, it goes back in months and it can show us all the traffic that potentially can be permitted, rejected, or ex escaped. So let's uh, first focus on reject, right? So you can see that every single transaction in our environment that could be rejected, and this could remind us there's uh, maybe a monthly backup that I didn't know, right? Or we would have broken it, right? So we can also see by process all the details on these, right? So it, like I can drill into the actual flow to see like pack accounts and stuff. And, and I'll, I could also do policy analysis to see which policy potentially allow or block this traffic. 
So also for applications or flows, we could look at it from different perspectives. Let's say, for example, we could look at the, the servers that's involved, uh, the name of the servers, or we could look at like processes that's involved, or for example, drop reason or, you know, anything that's relevant, right? So that gives us a really good view of what's going to be blocked, right? And we could also look at this from a different perspective, like by looking at potentially package that could escape from this policy as well. So we can tighten it down even more if it makes sense. So as you can see, secure workload can automatically group and cluster my servers together and based on their characteristics and tell me exactly what they do and has the ability to automatically generate a policy for me based on the telemetry it sees, either traffic metadata or flow logs from the clouds. It can tell me that I have uh, used ports and services, right? And on top of that, it can analyze my policy against live traffic, not simulation. Right. So I can be absolutely certain that I'm not going to accidentally block anything important. And all I need to do is click on this enforcement button. But policy can be applied across the board. My on-prem data center, all sorts of clouds like AWS, Azure, Google, or to Kubernetes for containerized application. I don't even need to learn how to do that in all of these environments. This concludes our demo. I hope you find it helpful and thank you for your time.